Wait, we've got Mike in Nashville. How you doing? Hey, how are you? Good. All right. Well, um, I believe in God, and I think um, that I can logically and uh, philosophically deduce that it is probable that he exists. Can you okay. define God? Yes. Um, first, he must have no creator. Um, or not, I shouldn't say he, it must have no creator. Okay. Um, it must be logical. It must have a um, form to it or a uh, logical uh, aspect about it. And I believe that it is uh, supernaturally spiritual. Okay, I'm, I'm confused. I do want to let you get to whatever proof it is, but I'm confused because you haven't said... When you say it's logical, are you saying that this God is actual, actually intelligent as like an agent? Well, I believe that it has um, a design, a structure, that it's not chaotic or random. That's okay. what I'm trying to say. Okay, but, well, apart from the supernatural thing, um, we have, it doesn't have a creator, and it is logical and non and, and non-chaotic. So, how is that a definition of a god? Well, that's my definition that I'm using. <laughs> well, okay, I could define mm -hmm. God is a metallic container that holds my coffee. But that well, does us no good. But, but that uh, is not supernatural, and it has a creator. Okay, but well, um, sure, sure, I, because I gave a different definition than you. Um, but I'm wondering, uh, okay, go ahead with your, your proof for the, what use is this God? Yeah. Well, you, you, you have, um, you have some, you, you have I X. I call myself a pantheist. Okay. Um, okay. But you've defined God as something that's not created, that is logical and is supernatural. Yes. Okay. Does that? I, I don't know that that gives me any information, any, any, uh, sufficient information to justify the definition. The reason we use words is in order to communicate ideas. So God normally carries with it the idea that this is some sort of intelligent agent. Are you saying that God may not be an intelligent agent by your definition? Yes, I'm saying okay, it doesn't necessarily then, have then, to be a what, persona. What difference does it make if you could demonstrate that this thing existed? I mean, you're, well, you're defining God in a way that, it, it, yes, it's different from me defining my coffee cup into existence, but you've, you've picked a particular definition that's useless. I wouldn't call it useless. Okay, so how, what, what use does it have? Um, I mean, it demonstrates that things are not random, uh, that there is a spirituality and an importance um, to the things that happen in the universe, that there is underlying logic and um, morality. How, um, how does, how does and, your definition of God demonstrate any of those things? Well, if... Um, okay. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. How does your definition of God demonstrate any of those things? Well, if it has a logical form to it, um, and it has... Uh, and the universe... If the universe has... Um, order and structure, um, it means that the things that we go through are not random events. If this universe was put together randomly, if there was no God... But no, 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 no. Nobody's saying that the universe was put together randomly if there was no God. How could it have been any other way if there is no God? If there, if there is no structure... Do you know what random means? There yes. is a structure in the universe. So you believe that there is structure to the universe. Where does that structure come from? It's intrinsic. Yeah. It is the physical laws. Well, that's, that's what I would use to say that that makes this universe God. Why? Um, so, so Why call it God? So you're calling the universe God. As a yeah, and I stated earlier that I, I, I know, you're, have to classify you're, myself as right. pantheist. You're, you're so, a pantheist, so why call the universe God? Because I mean, because I feel that. Um, Why can't we just call it universe? Yeah, what does God what add it. to it? What does God? What you're, you're, you're right. You could you could 
call it any label you wanted to. Okay, so what, um, what additional understanding do we gain by labeling it God? And, and by the I, way, please demonstrate that the universe is in any way supernatural. That, um, part, that part of your definition is just kind of hanging out there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, for one, it has no uh, creator. Um, there's nobody that created it. What's that um, have to do with being supernatural? And also, um, if you look at things like, and you'll probably scoff at this, but things like art, uh, things like music. Those have um, creators. Yes, they are. I'm not saying, obviously, I know Mozart created music, but um, I feel strongly that uh, art is an example of um, spiritualness. So that's um, the best uh, argument I've ever heard. I feel strongly that. That's not an argument. Okay. I, I feel strongly that there's a God. I feel strongly that my big toe is prettier than somebody else's big toe. That's not an argument. Okay. I think that um, art... And beauty is uh, one reason to believe. Okay, so now you've gone from I feel strongly that to I think that. What's the argument? Not just the claim. I know you think that. What's the argument? That that is an example of, you asked me an example of something uh, supernatural or spiritual, and the, I'm giving you one. Th those aren't supernatural. And in fact, I mean, you're citing purely subjective experiences as is some kind of justification for claiming that the universe is God? I mean... I mean, you've defined the universe as God. You then assert that it is therefore supernatural. And when asked to provide a justification for this, you go from, I feel that it's supernatural, to I think that it's supernatural. And I'm still asking, why? I know what you think. It, I knew that as soon as you said pantheist. Yeah. I mean, beauty, I think... Oh, okay, sorry. Beauty is one reason to believe that the universe um, is supernatural. Why? Why? The fact that there is such a thing as beauty Why? in Why? our universe. Why? Why what? Why is the existence of beauty evidence of something being supernatural? Yeah, do you, you have to construct an actual argument that leads from A, some premise upon which we agree, to the conclusion that because this exists, therefore, you, you haven't done anything remotely like that. Uh, what you're doing, I'll tell you, because you, you're not able to actually form it into anything approaching an argument, but you're using an a logical fallacy known as the argument from ignorance. Or at worst, at best, the, the Dawkins reformation, the argument from personal incredulity. You see beauty in the world. You can't think. Th you do not think that beauty could exist without there being some supernatural cause. Therefore, there must be a supernatural cause. Well, congratulations. Your ignorance about what other causes there might be is completely irrelevant. It is no valid argument but for you to be claim that beauty is ne is necessarily the result of supernatural causes. Do you think that? Um, this universe could have that something like beauty or or emotions could be random uh, randomly uh, given to our universe that they're, it just happened. No, they're not random. <sighs> evolution I mean, has how, how evolution could, has like, selected like, a lot of like, these. I, I these believe things. in evolution, but I'm saying how could things like art, beauty. What we think is beauty, how could we even begin to think that things are beautiful? I mean, that seems like a whole different realm than, you know, gaining arms and legs. No, and it's not. No, it, it isn't. It's, it's not. If I stick you with a pen, that causes pain. If I give you a massage, that's pleasure. Do you think that that has to, has to have a supernatural course, a cause? No. Okay, then why would you think that my visual appreciation of something as attractive versus my visual rejection of something as unattractive must have a supernatural cause? Well, it's more than just visual. I mean, it's emotional and... Okay, I mean, it's still a brain state. 
What, what is so different about appreciating something as being visually appealing versus being visually unappealing? What about those brain states requires supernatural intervention? I'm just saying that I don't think that those things could have happened. Well, uh, congratulations. God. Congratulations. That's an argument from ignorance. That, yeah, that's it. You haven't, I mean, it's, it's a logical fallacy. I don't know how many ways we can explain it. Saying that you don't think it could have happened without some supernatural cause is not an argument. So you, you, can't right. think of, you can't think of any, um, anything beneficial in, in all of humanity's evolution for an emotion like fear. Can you, can you say that again? I'm sorry. Can you think of anything in all of, hum, in all of human history, all of human evolution, can you think of anything that might been might have been beneficial for the emotion fear? Yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, if you're afraid of like a lion, you will run away from it. Well, then you understand why other emotions might have an evolutionary benefit and why they wouldn't be random. Yeah, but there, fear is a primal emotion. Um, nobody so? would argue that dogs don't have fear. Do you um, think dogs experience love? I don't know. I'm, I'm not that's, sure. You that's can the best that. answer you've I given all day. Yeah. Both ways. The I think I, of love, I mean, you, they, Do you think that dogs find some things more attractive than others? Like, for example, legs and fire hydrants versus cactus? <laughs> uh, don't, you think that, don't you think that a dog is going to find a plate of food more beautiful than a pile of dung? Well, in some cases, that might not be true, but... <laughs> well, well, now... There's there's a d really big difference between a plate of food which is needed for sustenance and uh, living. But there's no there's than, not than there's there's not from from the, what you're talking about. Why do I find something beautiful? It's because my brain is relating it to something else that I've found beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, a so good dinner is attractive to me. So the image of a good dinner is attractive to me. A pile of dung is unattractive to me. And so the image is unattractive to me. And so mm -hmm. we, can, we have this broad spectrum of things. Plants are going to be, for example, beautiful to me. And I wonder why, I wonder if it's just a coincidence that plants tend to also provide us sustenance. Attractive yeah. people are going to be beautiful versus unattractive people. And you can draw connections between, for example, their physical health and their ability to reproduce and what diseases they may have. This, this labeling of things as attractive or not or beautiful or not, there's nothing, I mean, the closest you've come is you just don't think it could happen unless there was some supernatural intervention. And oh, okay. by the way, your supernatural intervention is not necessarily any kind of agent that could intervene. So you have an entirely, entirely contradictory structure to your pantheism. So you're saying um, that uh, beauty is designated by necessity. I think it's... The, it's thing, the things that we need are beautiful to us. Is that basically what you just said? I'm saying that that's one instance, sure. Yeah. Okay, so couldn't you use the fact that, uh, you know, art, if it's beauty, then that means that we need it. Couldn't, or if it's beautiful to us, um, obviously art and music and stuff like that doesn't help our bodies live. Actually... But couldn't, couldn't you use that to say that um, there is something spiritual about no. it? No. Because we no. do need it? No, you can't. And that's can't. beautiful? No, mm -hmm. you can't. Just because I mean, you don't know what the explanation is does not mean you're justified in asserting that the explanation is supernatural. I mean, in the case of music, we know that music has effect on the human body, and therefore we, can, uh, we, we have some good understanding of why some things are called music and other things are called noise. Although we're talking about entirely subjective labels that are based on individual experience. But even if we had no clue as to why somebody found something beautiful or why everybody found something beautiful and this other thing not beautiful, that does not justify asserting that there is a supernatural cause. And by the way, we never even had you, I, had you define supernatural or spiritual, the, the spiritual being the most nonsense, used, uh, misused word anybody's ever done. You, you, you can't get from A to B simply by saying, I can't think of any other way it would happen. That's an argument from ignorance, as we said like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. 
And on that note, think about it some more, Mike. Call us back when you get some more meat to the argument, but I got callers waiting, so thanks a lot.